In this video, we're checking out the Orchard Laser Master 2 Pro. It's got a large work area and a small price. Stick around. Alright, so today we're looking at the Laser Master 2 Pro by Ortur. It's fully assembled, but it wasn't always that way. It comes in a box and we have to do a lot of assembly. So, with that, let's dive right in. We'll get this thing assembled and start working with it. So, fun stuff. I don't do unboxings, but here we are. Pulling um, this layer of parts, all well packaged and protected, out and putting them on the table, which is lots of fun, right? Well, ultimately, it comes down to the assembly manual, which has tons of pictures, but the verbiage isn't great to explain the process, along with this focusing document, which tells you how to focus the laser so that you get good, clean, sharp engravings. A bag of sample materials, a brush, uh, some zip ties and a 3D printed height adjustment holder, some belts, MC hammer glasses, some brackets or legs, one of the two, um, a YN stop, so just a little micro switch and a couple brackets for the drag chain. This aluminum cylinder is a height gauge for the diode so that you know how, how far your diode needs to be focused away from the material. Some thumb screws, um, a bag full of Allen wrenches and T-nuts, a USB connector, a power supply, 24 volt, and uh, the main controller for the Orter. It's got um, some pretty neat features, a flame alarm, so it's able to detect if there's fire in the engraving area, and one of the smallest e-switches I've ever seen. Nice and solid, it's got a nice header on the end to connect the wiring harness. Or offline controller. I'm not sure what that's for. It's only got four pins in there. And then the laser diode. Nice air cooling pathways in there. 5.5 watt, 24 volt driver board on top. A little four pin connector. And a large fan there to push a lot of air down through it to keep it cool. So I guess you could call that air assist. Uh, the fan blows down towards the laser and evacuates smoke at least. Um, and then it's got this shield. Minimal safety protection here. These 2020 extrusions are pretty nice though. They are laser engraved or etched uh, with rulers to give you some approximate way to locate your, your material inside the work area. Those are very nice. And the Z gantry comes fully assembled. Uses uh, the V wheels. Uh, and neat aspect of this is that it's pretty much ready to go out of the box. It has a neat way of incorporating the six millimeter belt into the extrusion channels, which is a really cool idea. I wish I'd thought of that would lend itself very well to uh, a camera slider, right? So that said, uh, we've got the drag chain and uh, extra wire that goes to the laser. That's it, so it's time to put this stuff together. So, which, that's another story. Reading through the documentation, although the pictures are informative, some of the the way that they describe the assembly and the parts to use is confusing um, and, it, and it wasn't straightforward for me uh, to understand the orientation and the connections that needed to be made. So I had to look at a couple other places online, look at a couple other people that assembled them just to confirm that what I was doing was right. Um, the resolution on the images isn't great so you can't really see the details in the parts that are being assembled. Needless to say, they have these corner brackets which have grub screws and then you put M5s into the channel, uh, threaded channel holes, which um, brings basically together your frame. And then the X gantry just rolls right onto your frame. And once you're there, you're, you're halfway done. 
uh, then it's just a matter of very specifically using the right nuts and washers to attach the feet in the rear and uh, T-nuts in the channels to make sure that they're connected correctly and you the feet actually are the belt tensioners so you pull the belt through the feet and then you use a washer to actually lock the belt. Um, one of the most challenging parts of this build is threading that belt under the wheel, over the gear, and then back under the wheel on both sides. It was a frustrating and tedious process. Um, I didn't have the right tool and so that made it particularly challenging um, but eventually I was able to thread them obviously and we pull those out the back. Once they're out the back there Again, we lock them down with these T-nuts, M5s, and bolts, and washers. Um, and once that's in place, then we can put the Y-stop on here, um, which is the belt tensioner on the, the left side there. And then the controller makes for the fourth leg, which uh, is in that corner. That mounts on a couple T-nuts. And then we mount a couple brackets for the drag chain. One goes on the gantry, of course. Uh, those use M3 screws. And there, <coughs> and the drag chain is connected to those brackets, as you would expect. And the wiring harness is already threaded in the drag chain, which was nice. And then mounting the laser is just using a couple thumb screws, putting it on the channel, and then we're pretty much good to go. It's just a matter of connecting the wiring. All the wiring have labels on them for whether they're X, Y, or laser. And then once all the wires are connected, it's, it's a matter of grounding out the ground pins and cleaning up the wiring with some zip ties. Put a couple zip ties on the front and a couple on the gantry. And then that, that one wire that's hanging down um, is for the laser so zip tying it so it's in a vertical orientation kind of keeps it out of it out of its own way one of my favorite tools is that blue little gun shaped device there which is a zip tie tightener and with that it's time to uh, set the height of the laser basically focus it to do that uh, you just put it over your material take out this measurement guide put it underneath your diode loosen those thumb screws, let it drop down to the surface, and then tighten them back up. That's the exact distance that it needs to be for the, the sharpest image or the sharpest focus. And lowering the protective shield, and we're good to go. But first, we need power. Oh, quite a little zap there. And then a USB connection to a computer. This is computer controlled. Hitting the power button, you see the little indicator light there blink and then turn on solid red. The device automatically homes itself. And then you see the blue light above the USB port indicating that the port is active. In Lightburn, in the lower right hand corner, you can click on devices and it will allow you to find my laser. And when you do that, it'll search USB devices and hopefully it finds something. In this case, it did. Gerbil device, 400 by 400 millimeter. That's the work area, 16 by 16 inches. You can uh, give it a name or turn laser. You can change the dimensions if you like. Um, just meant agree that it homes to the front left and you want it to auto home. When you're finished, you're finished. Click OK. In the lower right corner, you select it from the drop down box there. And when you do, your grid changes to the size of the work area, which is pretty big, right? 16 inches square. So you can put lots of things in there. Um, laptops or larger products that you want to engrave. I wouldn't recommend cutting it much with this. <coughs> and the height is, it only accommodates about a half an inch. But for us, we're going to cut this little logo here. 
you may recognize it and make a small business card type thing which is a good test for us we've got some aluminum business cards that are anodized maybe they're anodized I think they're just coated in acrylic or something uh, and then we have some sample piece of wood now in terms of the the speed we're gonna put it 50 millimeters per second at 100% power and we'll go from there we're gonna make those better solid we're gonna cut the selected but first we're just gonna cut a square as a registration mark so we cut that now I know where I need to place the card that's better than using the rulers on the 20 extrusion and then this is sped up 10 times the actual speed for this aluminum one I believe they're anodized but I but I'm not sure I know on the 60 watt laser that I have it removes it entirely uh, and you can see like shiny aluminum underneath it this one didn't seem to be doing that with at only 5.5 watts when it's done you'll see the total time for this was about 25 minutes so you're not gonna want to do many of these and that's because it's a solid rastered image uh, this particular image there's lots of different ways that you can do it in Lightburn uh, I was just using the I think the Stucky or Jarvis I did the same thing for a piece of Baltic birch first burning the registration square so I know where to place it I did adjust the the power down to only 50% for this Baltic birch this is the actual speed for engraving the words on this particular Baltic birch so it does go pretty quick if you're engraving small objects it's just when you start swinging it back and forth with the raster I like doing bitmaps and stuff it's gonna be a lot slower though this was starting to smoke I'm not sure if I was able to capture it on camera here but it did start to fill the room with smoke pretty well I have some ventilation but not enough to handle a laser that doesn't have an enclosure I think uh, that's probably one of the biggest challenges with this design is that you're gonna need to invest in safety equipment and air circulation and filtration and ventilation to keep you safe otherwise you may last about a year depending on what you're engraving with this you know there's a the potential for a lot of toxic vapors and fumes to be emitted from this I wouldn't say that you should use it in your house in your garage or outdoors is your best bet all right so that's complete let's look at it so very dark and you can feel maybe a sixteenth of an inch depth on this uh, overcharred over engraved so I could have ran that at a lot less power uh, this wood burns really easy um, which is probably why they sent it as part of the sample you can clean these up sometimes if you use uh, depending on how good your focus is on part you can use sanding block and that will clean up any charring that you had there um, in this particular case it's gonna work pretty good because it was deep enough but if you're just doing a really light engraving chances are you might sand off the, the engraving itself
Not bad. Could be a little clearer. Turn down that power and it probably would be a, a little bit more focused. And then the, uh, compared to the other one. So all in all, this machine works pretty well. I would say that uh, you definitely need to bolt it down to your table um, at the higher movement speeds. This thing does start walking around. And obviously if your workpiece is sitting still and it's walking around, you're gonna get blurry text and blurry aspects. So anything over 100 millimeters a second needs to have this machine bolted down. So there it is, um, you know, a huge work area, this thing can, engrave just about anything but as I pointed out earlier you're gonna want to you know invest in the safety aspects but for the price point this is a great introductory laser that can uh, you know work for a lot of people so that's gonna do it for this video the laser master 2 pro by Ortor. it's got a large work area 400 by 400 it's gonna be able to engrave and cut all of those large-scale products at the expense that you might need good ventilation, you either have to do it outside or have some good fans running, or your, your house is gonna get pretty smoky. That said, all in all, it's a nice package. It assembles really quick, and it's easy to use. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. It'll keep you notified on future updates. If you like this particular video, you want more information, there's links down in the description. Give me a thumbs up, and in the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.